The stock market has had rather a rough time recently, and there have been headlines about a stock market meltdown, or the potential for another recession, or the potential for there being a hard landing in the United States and global economies. There have been concerns that the economy is heading over the edge of a cliff. Now, of course, this most recent incident was catalyzed by some rather disappointing employment data in the United States which then led to some extent of a downward cascade as the market started to price in recession fears and started also to price in concerns that the Federal Reserve might be too late to the party in terms of fixing up a potential recession. Now, to this end, I spoke to ABC News in Australia about what was going on with the global economy. And this is what I had to say about the most recent stock market crash. And in reality, it was probably a confluence of several factors that really all amalgamated on that Friday catalyzing a significant fall in stock prices. So to paraphrase Mohamed El Arian of Queen's College in Cambridge, he basically indicated there were three overarching factors. Firstly, fundamentals, secondly, policy, and then thirdly, technicals. So fundamentals being what was going on with the economy. So there were some negative job reports. So unemployment rate that went up to 4.3% from 4.1%. The amount of jobs created, well, that was much below expectations. So about 50,000 jobs below expectations. Hourly earnings were also not great, increasing 3.6% year-on-year versus 3.8%. We've also seen other, other surveys, such as ISM manufacturing, which came in below 50, showing signs of economic weakness. Then you've got concerns about policy, which is, was the Federal Reserve too slow to react to this? Was the Federal Reserve keeping rates too high for too long, and just behind the eight ball in terms of getting things under control? Then you've got technicals, which is when there was a large market downturn, some people might need to perhaps sell more stocks because they were being margin called. I needed to sell their stocks in order to perhaps satisfy a reduction in their portfolio and exit some positions. So you end up with a whole lot of oh, these factors uh, all amalgamating to create problems with the market. So thus far, I've mostly been talking about the United States. But of course, there's been global economic turmoil because what happened in the United States then spread elsewhere into, for example, Australia and Europe and into Japan as but a couple of examples. So why exactly was there such contagion? Well, here's what I said to ABC. So why does this send jitters across global markets, including those in Asia? What has been the impact? So the US economy is really central to many other economies, and we've got a couple of factors here. Firstly, we've got the trade linkages. Secondly, we've got the financial flows and the contagion that might arise. And then thirdly, we've got the symbolism of it. And that symbolism is likely what was driving a lot of it. That is, if the US economy appears to be stalling, that might send a signal about the state of the global economy. So if the US is stalling, then what does that say about the Australian economy? Is it that the Australian economic data hasn't yet showed up what the US has, or there's going to be broader signs of weakness? And if the US economy is stalling, then what does that mean for the exports into the United States? I.e., is there going to be more or less demand, sorry, for goods going into the US, thereby weakening other countries. In addition to this, if the US economy is cratering, then some capital might start to get rationed. And we saw some of this all the way back with the global financial crisis, where when there was capital rationing, companies simply had difficulties growing going forward. So there were broader concerns about the global economy really driving a lot of this downturn. The next question, of course, is whether the US is going to head into a recession. And if you ask 10 different economists for exactly that prediction, well, you'll end up with a hundred different answers. In essence, there's no certainty about whether or not the US is going to go into a recession. We had one rather bad data reading in terms of that employment data, but that really is not enough for us to know that the US is going to go into a recession. Our thrall GDP growth was positive in the latest reading, albeit that is backward looking and was from quarter two. And in that case, GDP came in at 2.8% year on year, seasonally adjusted annual growth. Now, of course, that could easily fall back in quarter three and quarter four. And certainly some might argue that with rates remaining incredibly high and with some signs of earnings decreasing a bit, economic activity decreasing a bit and unemployment going up, the US might head toward a recession. But I'm not totally sure the US is right there at the moment. And here's what I had to say about that again to the ABC. Well, the US has managed to, in the past, defy gloomy predictions of a recession. Will it be able to this time? Well, with the recent economic data, it was really a catalyst on that Friday. However, after that, there was some slightly better data. So, for example, ISM services, 
which is another survey representing effectively strength in the services sector, that actually came out quite reasonably. It came in above 50, which is showing signs of some strength. Contrast with the ISM manufacturing, which came out on the Friday. In essence, you've got a couple of data points that came out, but they're not totally representative of what the whole economy is doing. In addition, the United States had positive GDP growth. GDP grew 2.8% on a seasonally adjusted annual basis in the latest GDP reading. And therefore, the US appears to be heading more towards a reasonable landing, but there are certainly some concerns about recession risks that, that people had really honed in on this Friday and the beginning of this week. Well, investors are also have concerns about the state of the Japanese economy. Tell us why. What factors contribute to this? Well, the Japanese economy has had uh, some economic issues for a while. Some of these are more long-term and structural, some of them a little bit more short-term. In addition, in Japan, unlike with, say, the United States or Australia, where there's been significant inflation and suddenly high inflation, Japan has almost had the opposite problem for many years. Incredibly low inflation, potentially to the extent of being deflationary. So Japan was trying to get inflation actually upwards, and upwards more toward that 2% area, which is why Japan had kept interest rates so low for so long. And it was only recently they'd actually started increasing rates to a very, very low level. Well, since the sharp falls we saw on Monday, Japan stocks have rebounded, as have other markets in the region. The next question is how this stock market sell-off actually relates to a potential recession. Now, here to be clear, there are possibly two overarching ways this could operate. Firstly, the stock market sell-off could reflect expectations of a potential future recession. In that case, it is the recession risk causing the sell-off. On the other hand, a sell-off can also exacerbate things. So, for example, a stock market sell-off might make it more difficult for companies to go out and raise capital, and might make the market more pessimistic about particular companies that are especially hard hit. It might make lenders more cautious about approaching those companies if the lenders start to interpret that stock market sell-off as a signal about the company's ongoing concerns. In essence, you can get a bit of a circularity here. And how much attention would you pay to the, to the share market sell-off as a possible sign of things to come? It's certainly worth looking at in that it gives us an idea about what the market thinks might happen. But there are so many different signals that sometimes go on in the market. So there's the uh, adage that sometimes bad news is good news or good news is bad news. Of course, people might be thinking about what is the Federal Reserve or the Reserve Bank going to do when they see the economy cratering. And if the market thinks, oh, well, gee, now the RBA is going to cut rates, the market might actually ironically respond positively to some negative news. So one needs to be cautious with interpreting exactly what the market does and why. And uh, oft times we sort of see the market move and then there are some ex post narratives trying to explain what happened. That said, it is informative. And it's informative when we look at the reason why. So say for example, we look at the market going down recently, we can see some signs of economic weakness underlying it. We can see some signs of some weak earnings for some companies. So we're talking companies such as weak earnings or weak fundamentals. Companies such as Nvidia or Tesla or Intel all had issues and all are major companies. So we can see that having some cracks in those companies specifically. And looking at the stock market helps us to identify what exactly is going on, or at least it helps us to focus our attention. Mark, thanks so much for explaining that to us. Really appreciate it. Mark Humphrey-Jenner, thank you. Thanks a lot. Great being with you.